Hello Matrix, and welcome to the fourth video on Calculus, brought to you by the Answer Series. In this video, we will continue looking at derivatives from first principles. Example number two, I ask you to use first principles to find f dash x if you get the following functions. Now, f dash x, remember, means the derivative. How do we find the derivative? We use the formula that we developed in the previous video. When a question says first principles, it means this is the formula you have to use. So I've given you five examples. What I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and I want you to try them. You might want to try one at a time. So try 2.1 and then look at the solution when we do it together. Then go back and pause the video and try 2.2 and so on. So pause the video, try 2.1 and we'll have a look and see together. In 2.1, they give you f of x equals minus 4x plus 5. So what I have is the following. f of x plus h means in place of the x, I put x plus h. So I get that. Then I must minus f of x, which I have there. What I now do is I multiply the brackets out on the top collect together like terms. Minus 4h divided by h is minus 4. Now if I take h tending to 0, well, what happens to minus 4 as h gets closer and closer to 0? Well, there's no h in minus 4. So what happens to minus 4 as h is anything? It's just equal to minus 4. So as h tends to 0, my answer is simply minus 4. Now let's think about this a little bit. What kind of graph is f of x equals minus 4x plus 5? It's a straight line graph. What is the gradient of the straight line graph? It's minus 4. And we know that because the general equation of a straight line graph is y equals mx plus c and the gradient is m. When working out the derivative, in other words the gradient, from first principles, what did I get for the gradient? Minus 4. What you might want to do now is pause the video, go back and try question 2.2 and then we will do it together. In this one I give you f of x equals 2x cubed. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. f of x plus h means in place of the x goes x plus h. I then minus f of x, which is my original function. I then need to multiply out x plus h three times. Now what you might want to do is you might want to learn what x plus h cubed is equal to, so that you don't have to waste time having to multiply it out in an exam if they give you a question like this. You then multiply it by 2, collect together like terms, take out a common factor of h, the h's cancel, and I get the limit as h tends to 0 of 6x squared plus 6xh plus 2h squared. Now I need to make h close to 0, so I make h tend to 0. So what does this get closer and closer to? Well, the answer is 6x squared. So the derivative of f of x equals 2x cubed is 6x squared. In 2.3, I've given you f of x is equal to minus 2. Now, f of x plus h means in place of x, put x plus h. But there is no x which means that f of x plus h is just minus 2, and f of x is minus 2. And if I take minus 2 plus 2 divided by h, I get the limit as h tends to 0 of 0. Well, if I make h closer and closer to 0, what happens to 0? Well, it doesn't matter what h is, 0 is just 0. So my answer 
is zero. Now let's think about this graph. What does the graph of f of x equals minus 2 look like? It's a horizontal line. And what is the gradient of a horizontal line? Zero. What answer did I get when using first principles? Zero. In 2.4, I've given you f of x equals minus x squared minus 5x plus 4. So for f of x plus h, in place of every x, I put x plus h. So I get that. I then need to minus f of x, which is there. Multiply all the brackets out. Collect together like terms. Take out a common factor of h. The h's cancel. And now what I do is I make h tend to zero. Well, if h tends to zero, what does this tend to? My limit is minus 2x minus 5. In 2.5, I give you f of x is equal to minus 3 over x. So f of x plus h in place of the x goes x plus h. I then minus f of x. What I then do is I do a common denominator on the top. I multiply out, collect together like terms. If I divide by h, it's exactly the same as multiplying by 1 over h. These h's then cancel. So I get the limit as h tends to 0 of 3 over x bracket x plus h. And if I make h closer and closer to 0, what is the limit? It's 3 over x squared. You should now understand how to find a derivative from first principles. Thank you for watching this video. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.